Hello and welcome back. My name is Josh and this is Finance Soup. And today I want to go over my quick analysis sheet as I had some questions about it and how it works. Um, so you know, as a refresher, you plug in the margin of, of Mando's. I use trailing 12 month, uh, sorry, revenue um, and the market cap. And basically what it does is it computes um, what your revenue growth is and what your operating uh, margins are. Um, and then it spits out a what your expected return is over the next 10 years. This is a 10 year calculator. Uh, one thing I did change though, and was the jumping off point for this is exit multiple. So at the end I used to use a 25% exit multiple on um, each of the numbers. Now you can actually control the multiple and change um, what your exit multiple is. So I wanna discuss a bit about what is exit multiple and just talk about how it can impact your uh, investment. So an exit multiple is, um, it's basically a P-E ratio, but in the future. So it's a P-E ratio. It's the price you pay per earnings, per dollar of earnings. So what are earnings? Earnings are profits. Um, so typically, P-E is about 20, but people who look at P-E in the short term, it's a very bad metric in the short term. Uh, just as an example, let's do Tesla P-E ratio. Um, you can see it has the highest P-E ratio among the largest 10 companies. Um, what is the P ratio? It's 340. Again, the average 20, what's Toyota's? Toyota um, has a, a 9.5. Uh, so again, that's a huge difference. And so some people go, well, that's enough research for me. Uh, it's got a high P ratio, therefore Tesla's overrated. Obviously not. Uh, you know, there's lots of smart value investors who still see that Tesla's a huge value. Why? Because Toyota's revenue growth is very slow and Tesla has been growing at 50% per year and that means their earnings are growing at a huge rate so uh, you know if their earnings are growing at 50% a year that P ratio should come down um, at, a, at a very quick rate while a company that's maybe been declining in earnings like Toyota um, it would actually go up the P ratio in the long term but eventually one day the logic behind a P ratio and exit multiple more accurately is one day the company will be steady state or stable you know tesla's not going to grow 50 percent per year forever maybe it happens for five years 10 years 15 who knows but one day this company is going to level off and see normalized growth maybe that's five percent maybe that's three percent whatever it might be but you're going to see regular um normalized growth for this company and when that happens you need to put a multiple on the earnings of that company and that's what an exit multiple is. So P ratio does have some validity in the long term, but in the short term, it tells you very little about a company, especially high growth companies, which are gonna have very high P ratio. So that's a value trap for a lot of people where they go, oh, low P ratio equals good company. Not necessarily, um, but there is some logic to it, which is P ratio does have validity once a company is in steady state. So what are some exit multiples, um, you know, basically, 30 would be a very, for the long term, again, in the short term, P ratios can be anything. We're not looking at that. We're looking at exit multiples, which I consider a P ratio for a long term steady state company. So 30% would be a very high uh, number. It's world class companies. You should not use a 30 PE uh, very often uh, for a steady state uh, company, um, or sorry, for a long term exit multiple. Uh, 25, I consider that high, but it's for growth companies and tech companies. So Tesla would be 30 or 25 um, because even though it's growing, you know, it's still going to be innovating. So I think even in the long term, you can give it a higher PE ratio. Um, 20, that's about average. If you look over the last uh, 40 years, you've seen uh, the PE ratio has been about 20, 21, 22, but I'm, I'm trying to use round numbers. So that's a solid company right now. 15, that's below average, that's a mature business, maybe lower margins. Um, and then for 10, that's some industries, I believe some financial companies have it, or maybe even a declining business that you think might go out of business. Uh, so you wanna, again, you're discounting those future earnings um, to an extent. And just to show you how much of an impact it has, I wanna go over Microsoft as an example. Um, so I took uh, Microsoft's earnings per share and share price, and basically if you divide the share price by the earnings per share, you get the PE ratio. So I took it from Macro Trends, a company I like, a website I use often, uh, for the last 13 years. And you can see here Microsoft's earnings per share, and I 
what's the compound annual growth rate? What rate were they growing their earnings per share at? And you can see over the last 13 years, they've grown on average their earnings per share at 11.75%. Uh, but the stock price over that time has appreciated on average by 30.5%. So that means there's been multiple expansions, not just growing because of the earnings, it's also growing because the multiple's gone up. And when we look at it, you know, back in 2008, the multiple's very low, five. I said like tens for a bad company. This was extremely low. Um, now this was the financial crisis, so a lot of companies had low PEs. Um, but you know, even after that coming out, you know, eight, then three, then seven, coming out of 2012, it started to normalize. 13 still low, 10, 16, okay, that's okay. Then it was 25, 20, 20. Uh, and then the last four years, you've seen significantly above average um, PEs. Again, 45, 25, 33, and 41. So these are very high PEs that I would not expect to continue. Um, but basically, how does the P, uh, like the exit multiple impact your investment? So I took here the earnings per share growth per year um, over the next five years and what the exit multiple expect to be in five years. Um, and this is what um, what you expect the investment. Again, right now it's a 42% PE. So I don't even have 42 as the exit multiple. I don't think that's going to be the case. But let's say the multiple decreases from 41 even just to 30 which is what we could set as a world-class company. Uh, if it continues to grow at actually faster than the last 10 years, which was 11.75, but let's say it grows at 12.5%, you're only going to expect to get a 5.44 per year return on your investment. Why? Yes, it's growing at 12.5%, which is above that. So you'd think you'd get a 12.5 times return. Unfortunately, that's not the case because you're also getting a tailwind of multiple compression. The multiple is actually going down, so people are paying less of a premium for that dollar of earnings. And if it goes even lower, if it goes to a 25 uh, PE, uh, then they need to get over 17 and a half percent just to maintain. And if they got, uh, you know, 12 percent, which is what they've done over the last 13 years, again on average, you're looking at barely the stock price barely even moving. Again, 1.6 percent per year. Uh, if it's even lower, you could see the the price could stay flat for the next five years. And again, this is not a comment specific to Microsoft. I will be investing in Microsoft. Full disclosure, I'm a shareholder, but I am looking at my position um, just because I do notice that it does have a very high PE at this time. And it's also not a company like Tesla that's growing in extraordinary rates. Again, companies like Tesla, you have to do a much longer time horizon. Um, but a company like Microsoft, I don't see it getting 20, 30% growth rates for the next five, 10 years. Could it? Yes, I need to investigate further, but I see the, the risks of the of multiple exp compression uh, being a very big tailwind that could hurt Microsoft in the future. Um, so again, that's what people are willing to pay per dollar of earnings. So I'm going to investigate this further, um, but this just helped explain how you need to look at uh, the earnings, the exit multiple, as well as, again, the exit multiple, which is now one of the um, inputs that I'm going to have on my quick analysis. So hopefully that helped explain exit multiples, why they're important, how they impact your valuation. Um, I will be working on the sheet in one day, hopefully making it available for you to use. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about exit multiples. Um, and again, my name has been Josh. This has been Finance Soup, and thanks so much for watching.